Incredibly sad news over the weekend as news broke that actor Chadwick Boseman passed away of cancer, which he'd been silently fighting for four years. Boseman portrayed several real life figures in his career, including James Brown, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, but famously played Black Panther of Marvel Universe. So Smiley, when did you first hear about the news? And most importantly, like, what does this mean to you? Oh man, I first heard about it like when it first, you know, kind of broke. I was, of course, I was heartbroken about it. Um, He's a, he's a great guy, very inspirational in our community, and just made me think about um, the role that he played. And it was such a big role. Like, how do you even kind of, like, what do you, where do you go from there, from that role, as far as Marvel, you know, Marvel and the, the movies go? Yeah, absolutely. I was at, at my sister's with my nephew, and I saw the news notification come up, and I was shocked because, obviously, he had, it kept it under wraps, you know. He filmed movies during all this time, didn't, obviously, didn't complain about it, did his job. And I even heard it was a little heart-wrenching. He was going to visit children in cancer Absolutely. wards while he had it the whole time. Absolutely. So, you know, you hear all the time people are real life superheroes. Well, I think that's, yeah, a, he was one. that's a good example of one. It was. So we're officially in the future. VTOL vehicles or vertical takeoff and landing, also known as flying cars, are coming. Japanese company SkyDrive, which is a company backed by Toyota, conducted a public test for its flying car. While you might have thought something bad happened, it didn't. The single seat car had a pilot operating the entire time and was able to fly five feet over for about five minutes. So the company aims to make a two-seater model and release it to the public by 2023. All right, are you in for the flying cars? Are you buying one? This is amazing. I think I would definitely be like interested in going on one of these. As if flying cars weren't already scary enough, Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain machine interface company, went live on YouTube to show how the vice interacts with a pig. If you didn't already know, Neuralink's mission is to merge human brains with AI to achieve AI symbiosis. While the Fitbit in your skull still has a long way to go, one of the first tests on Gertrude showed that we could see neurological firings inside the brain of a pig. But the live stream's main purpose was to recruit people to join the Neuralink team. All right, this seems pretty sci-fi, right? So I don't know that I want anything implanted in my head personally, would you take the plunge? Uh, no, that's not. Uh, I'm good, brother. I will. I'm call me old fashioned, like you said. I am. I mean, I'll. What, if I have to text or whatever I need to do, I'll just do it the old manual way. Yeah, I'm good. The new Avengers video game has mostly positive reviews. However, you better be prepared to drop some extra coin if you want to unlock all the content. Once you start playing, there are $10 hero challenge cards which help unlock more abilities in character functionality. So are you familiar with microtransactions in video games and what that actually means? I am a little bit to the T, but maybe for our viewers that don't, like, let's break it down a little bit for them. Yeah, so you're asking me to nerd out. Okay, yeah, so nerd out. <laughs> basically, you know, you pay 60 bucks for a game, you're expected, you're hoping to get all the content, right, that it comes with. Well. Um, in the last few years, loot boxes is a big term. You've heard microtransactions. Um, I think it really probably took off with um, Fortnite and their V-Bucks. Yes. You know what that is. So basically kids can buy packets of V-Bucks, $50, bucks, $50 equals 50 V-Bucks or whatever, and they can unlock skins, weapons, yeah. different character dances, all this stuff. And it's done amazing things for that company. But then, of course, there's people that are saying it's a little unethical. You're not really, you're not really giving us the game that you promised. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's just a way for companies to add revenue to their bottom line. Like, that's, that's kind of what it is. On Sunday, United Airlines announced that they were doing away with change fees for good. The move hopes to boost bookings as overall industry is still hurting from the pandemic. The cost of flight changes used to be $200 plus a difference in fee. Smiley, will this make you want to fly United more often? You know, flights are really cheap right now, but I think, you know, prior to this change, it'd be almost easier for you just to buy a new flight versus, you know, paying for that change on whatever flight you had already, you know, bought. So uh, this is a great move for the company. I think it's just going to entice more people to fly and actually, you know, again, to stimulate the economy, right? That's what we're looking for. So how about yourself? What do you think? Well, I think, uh, you know, Southwest Airlines already didn't have change fees, right? They would, right. Uh, they would just make you pay the difference in the fee if it was more. So hopefully this will make other airlines follow suit, right? Like American, Delta. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if you can stop paying change fees for those. I mean, I think we talked in another story earlier about nickel and diming. Yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about the original way of nickel and diming is, you know, baggage fees, whatever. Yeah. So, all right, so fun story for you. COVID news has been on the decline, but there was a report released by the CDC that shows 94% of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. had contributing conditions. That means only 6% of deaths had COVID-19 as the only cause. So these numbers are based on death certificates, what the CDC says are the most reliable source of data. They also noted that the data is not yet complete and that things are subject to change. Again, I know you're passionate about COVID and what's been happening. So what's the deal? This is pretty big news, right? This from, I mean, we've had an entire, our country from a population in the world has been in lockdown, right? And the CDC is coming out and saying, yeah, well, actually only a small number of these deaths are COVID related. Um, for me, 
I think that, of course, you still take all precautions um, when it comes to like safety and whatnot. But you also know too, there's the I think you, just your level of maybe anxiety or just kind of worried from actually dying from COVID itself goes down a lot. I mean, it just has to, the numbers say it, right? So um, now if you have, of course, uh, you know, and condolences to anyone that's, you know, a family or anything that's, anyone that's lo uh, lost a family member from uh, COVID, but still and yet, we can kind of, let's, you know, we're at, we're at, we're at a 10, I think we can, you know, kind of dial it back a little bit. Yeah, I agree. So. What is this? Well, if, if I read that correctly, you know, six out of 100 would have died that COVID specifically caused it, right? The other ones maybe have been, have been underlying conditions, um, which, like you said, if we're wearing masks, why can't we do things? If that's going to work for us, why can 150 people be on an airplane, tiny tube, right? but you can't go to church if that's what you want to do? Exactly. Do so I don't understand this picking and choosing of what we can and can't do. That's I guess will always be confusing to me. All right, guys, thanks for watching Nibble Bits. I'm here with my host, Cliffy. And it is your boy, Robert. <laughs> Smile. See y'all later. Thanks. Bye.